256, are you washed in the blood? Number 256. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? It's not a new song by any means. It was written in 1968. It's a Gaither song. But if you know it, sing it out because I don't know if we've ever done this as a congregation. So I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. There are things as we travel this earth, shifting sands that transcends all the reason. Of man, but the things that matter the most in this world, they can never be held in our hand. I believe. Bye. 
certainly good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, I don't know what I, I did wrong, but I've, I've already got it corrected for it. Uh, my wife got on to me for laying my Bible in her seat. And then a lady got on to me uh, because we didn't stay for the, uh, for the dinner Sunday. And then a lady got on to me the way I parked out in the parking lot. And I just don't understand that. I try my very best to do what's right and then get criticized for it. Amen. But we are so glad to be here tonight and we're glad that you're here. And uh, the preacher had called me this uh, right before I came to church and wanted me to tell you that he missed you. He's uh, real busy at the teen camp and uh, he'll be home uh, by, the, by the weekend. But he wanted me to tell you that he, he uh, uh, praying for us and that he loved you. And I uh, pray for that we have a good service tonight. And that's what I'm praying for. That uh, we'll hear from God tonight, and uh, we'll worship him and honor him in all that we do and say. And so just pray for the service, and then we'll have some special prayer requests that we need to make in just a few moments. Okay. Amen. And were you going to have the offering, too? Or? Yeah. Okay. Ushers, would you get ready for the offering? I guess Usher, Brother Malin. <laughs> He does a good job running solo. <laughs> and while, while we uh, don't have any Jeopardy music to cue, I think the only other thing that I remember announcement-wise was be sure to be here Sunday evening right, for the business meeting concerning the building project. So, of course, everyone here, I think, will be in their places for that. So, <laughs> Brother Manley, if you wouldn't mind praying for the offer. You know what? Thank you for the opportunity. If I claim the blood a couple times, uh, number 245, if you need the words, number 245. Thanks to those bloodstains, we can look forward to just over in the glory land, number 172. Number 172, just over in the glory land. I have a home prepared where the saints abide, just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side, just over in the glory land. Oh! 
Garcia. He went back to the doctor today for a follow-up, and it, w it was so bad that they sent him to the hospital immediately at Piedmont at Walton County. Uh, his uh, liver is failing, and it has affected his kidneys and heart, and the hospice is uh, coming in to talk to her about the next step, and she ended a, a message to us today, short of a, a miracle or transplant, there are nothing else to be done. He's in bad shape. Uh, he's just in the hands of God, really, according to the doctors. But we know that God can do miracles, and uh, God is uh, he's in charge of everything. And, but we need to remember him and uh, Miss Holly Garcia in prayer uh, tonight and pray that God's will will be done and that he'll comfort the family in a, in a mighty way. And then also, and he's in room 154. Say the hospice to come and talk to us and see what the next step might be. Then uh, Catherine Whitehead is going to have surgery on Friday, uh, July the 21st, on her neck. So we need to pray for her and uh, Brother uh, Garcia uh, tonight. So, Brother Bill, would you pray for Johnny and Catherine okay. tonight? Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you always for being able to gather on Wednesday night. Let's pray.
Someone else got a special prayer request. Anybody else got a, a prayer request that need to make be made known tonight? Brother Rick, I have a text from Brother Terry. Okay. Uh, and it says he asked tonight on whatever this would be. Tonight my brother Rex leaves a prayer request. Please bring it up before the church for prayer. I need all the comfort and peace of the Holy Spirit. I need him to lead me to a church. church there in okay i got you now yes okay remember that request and you'll probably be moving and uh, that's a, one of the main things to find a good church to go to when you move out of, of this area that for sure uh, brother tim would you pray for that request else got a, a special prayer request? Yes, Brother Paul. Yeah, we're on your prayer for the uh, signature next Thursday morning. Uh, uh, for the thyroid, we're doing something in November for the next for the liver. And, uh, that's all for it. But I, but on the other hand, Kevin, Kevin had his, uh, he had his uh, urine therapy done. Rose, you having her surgery? Thursday. She having her <laughs> surgery for sir. Thursday. Miss Susan, would you pray for, for Miss Rose? Brother Dale, I don't know what you remember. Did you uh, go into Gwinnett Hall when uh, Brother Doug Williams was there? Do you know him? You don't know him. So Brother Doug is a, a real close friend of mine, and uh, he had some health problem, and he had radiation. He's about 86 years old, and he had radiation for five weeks, and he came home last week, and he's not doing good. I mean, he sounds like a dead man, and uh, he's having a hard time. It just took all the strength out of him, and he in serious condition, so I want you to pray for Brother Doug Williams, if you would do that. Kevin, would you pray for him? Yes, yeah, Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for allowing us to come to your house, Lord, to worship you, Lord, and bring our stuff to you, Lord, and fellowship with you, Lord. We uh, lift up Brother Doug Williams, Lord, that uh, you touch him, Lord, and that you, you let him every through there, Lord, and whatever he's going through, and that uh, you give him the strength, Lord, to, to get over what he's going through. Anybody else? How about a prayer? Somebody had it. Yes, brother. Okay, brother Dale, would you pray for her?
How about a praise? Somebody got a praise. God done something special for you this week that you need to share. Yes, ma'am. Praise, what a praise, yeah. Anybody else got a praise? Yes, ma'am. Um, let me praise God for my family and my voice. And, uh, you know, my, my little one, he doesn't talk much, but he's starting to come around. And every day he says something to you. Today he pulled up the vacuum before church and he said, shit. He <laughs> said, <laughs> He's a Baptist. <laughs> Anybody else got a praise? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was praying for a job a couple of weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. They called me for a job this Friday. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. There's been a lot of prayer go up for you, young lady. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, sir, brother. Your sister. <laughs> I can't see that far. <laughs> I just want to praise the Lord and just say thank you so much for being present, not just to, you know, be at church or in our family's lives, but also our work, just to be able to fellowship and to be of encouragement, uh, to be able to be a blessing to uh, someone who needed some support and guidance, being able to just uh, speak to them from God's word and to be able to be a blessing and having God to use me in that in that area. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else got to pray? All right. Turn to the book of Jonah. I'm, I've been excited about this for about a week. I've been studying over and over and over again. And I, I don't know when I'll preach again, but I may. It's so much in the book. Of, it's a small book, uh, but it's so much in this book. Uh, it's, about, it's a story about a, a, a man's personal life. Uh, when you think about Jonah, you always think about Jonah and the whale. Uh, but it's more to it than that. Uh, there are many who deny that, that Jonah even existed. Uh, they, they say, no, he, that's just a fairy tale. That's not, not, that's not so. Uh, but he is mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 14 as a prophet. Jesus talked about him in the New Testament. And so, you know, if they deny Jonah, they deny the, the Lord Jesus. In fact, if you, if you deny the book of Jonah, uh, just what about deny the whole Bible? It, the whole Bible uh, is inspired. Yeah. It's from God. But it's so many that, that don't, don't believe that. They come up, they, they come up with so many different, different ideas about, about the story or, or, or about Jonah. Let me give, give you three or four things that people have said what, what really happened. Well, we know what really happened because this is the real thing. This, this is the word of God, and we take it for what it says. But one, one, one uh, guy said, uh, Jonah had a dream in a ship while he was asleep during the storm, and the book is the account of his dream. Just, just, a, just a dream, just a dream. One, one guy said, a, a group said, Jonah, Jonah is a copy of the mist of Hercules and the sea monster. Isn't that something? This is it. Joseph's ship that was going to Tarshish was wrecked. Another ship rescued Jonah, which had a, had a fish for a figurehead. Had a, a figurehead of Jonah on the front of the boat. And I, I like this one, but I don't like it, but it's just uh, stupid. <laughs> Jonah fell in the sea and found refuge in a dead fish on the water. <laughs> Isn't that something? People won't believe the word of God, but they, they come up with something stupid, just stupid. Yeah. But I'm glad that Jonah, the book of Jonah is inspired. It, it, it is true. And it is the story of a man's personal life. 
And you, you do it, this is the introduction. I'm not going to preach on the story of a, of a man's personal life. Maybe I can later on. I may, uh, when the next time I preach, I may come back to Jonah and, and, and talk about the story of, of a man's personal life. But in chapter number one, we see the rejection or rebellion of Jonah. You know, God t uh, t spoke to him and told him to go to, to Nineveh and preach, and he wouldn't do it. He, he rebelled. He rejected the call of God and, and just ran from God. You know the story. In chapter number 2, we see that uh, Jonah was praying, and he remembered God, and he repented of his sin, of his rebellion. In chapter number 3, we see the recalling of Jonah. God gave him a second chance. See the recalling of Jonah. And then after, in chapter number four, after God spared the people of Nineveh and saved them, it made Jonah mad. He was angry. And we see, we see the resentment of Jonah. And it is the story of a man personal life, but it's more than that. And this is what I, want to, what I want to get over to you tonight. And I, I hope the Holy Spirit would just help me to get this over to you because what a blessing it was to me. It is the, it is the story of God's providence and sovereignty. I want you to remember that. It's the story of God's sovereignty and providence. You see, the purpose of the Word of God is to reveal the God of the Word. God of the Word. This we see in Jonah, beautiful story of God's providence and his sovereignty. In chapter number one, we see the sovereignty of God. We see this, and I want to show it to you in just a moment. The definition of providence is this. The foreseeing care and guardianship of God over his creation. Ladies and gentlemen, if God created the world, don't you think he can be in charge of it and control everything that goes on? I do. I do. And then the word sovereignty means having supreme rank. It means supreme power. It means uh, supreme authority. God being in control of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here tonight and, and I tell you, if I could, if I say I understood everything about the sovereignty of God, I wouldn't be telling the truth. I don't understand all of it. But I believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe in that. And I want to show it to you. Look in, look in the, the first, first verse of chapter number one of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, we see God chose him. The word of God came to Jonah. Nobody else. It came to Jonah. So that tells me that God chose him. And then look in verse number two. Uh, he said, Arrive and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness have come up before me. Here we see the call of God. God called Jonah to do this. He said, I want you to go to Nineveh, that great city. And by the way, it was the wicked city. It was very, very wicked. It was a, a brutal uh, group of people. Now, I'll say more about that later on in the message. But here we see in verse 1, God chose Jonah. Uh, verse number 2, God called Jonah. Now, look in verse number 3. But Jonah arose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of of the Lord. Now we're just going to stop here just a moment and let me say this. Probably the devil made sure that ship was there. But God allowed that ship to be there too. You see, God is all he has almighty power. The devil has power, but not all almighty power. God is in charge. God had been charged. So God chose uh, Jonah. God called Jonah. Uh, God controlled the ship. Look in verse number four. But the Lord, you see that? But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship would like that to be broken. God controlled the wind. 
You remember in the New Testament when the disciples was in a storm? Jesus was in the, uh, the, the ship of sleep and they, they went, down, went down and woke him up. And he got up and said, you're a little faith and he said, peace, be still. And the wind just ceased. Same thing here. God controlled the wind in this certain situation. Look in, in verse uh, number seven now. We're going to speed right along. And, and, and a storm came up and the sailors were afraid and they didn't know what to do and they prayed to their God and they, they said, where, where, where is this guy at? Where, where is Jonah at? Maybe he can pray to his God and, and, and he can do something about it. But the sailors, look at in verse seven. They found out why, why Jonah was uh, running from the Lord. They found out why the storm it came because God was in charge. He was in control. And, and they said, everyone of his fellow come and let us cast lots. Let us cast lots. That we may know for whose cause the evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Reckon why? Reckon why? They, they cast lots. I mean, you know, dice, throwing them dice. Some of you shaking your hand. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but you see, God was in charge of the sailor's dice. They rolled the dice. And it fell upon Jonah. Listen to this. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 33, the lot is cast in the lap. But the whole disposing or decision is of the Lord. He's in charge. You see, see, man may throw the dice, but God makes the spots to come up in this iteration. God, the sovereignty of God. Sovereignty of God. God controlled the, 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 the ways of the sea. Look in verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it. They were in the storm now. And they were, these men were been stormed before, but not like this storm. Not like this storm. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wroth and were tempted against them. Reckon why? Reckon who, who, who was in charge? Who was in control of the waves of the sea and of the wind? God. God was. The sovereignty of God. So, so we have the great God. We have the only God. Not a God, but the God. Amen. And I believe that nothing happened unless he okayed it to happen. He created everything so he can control everything. Look in verse number 17. Verse number 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. Who did? God did. The Lord did. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God had prepared a fish here with a backslidden uh, uh, might have been a Baptist. I don't know but he was backslidden. And God was after him. After him. Although he was a backslider. Out of the will of God. But God didn't forget about him. Didn't forget about him. God would be in charge of the fish. And then we can come over to, to chapter number four. Where Nineveh had, had repented. And, and, and Jonah was angry because God repented and, and saved the city. In fact, they were enemies to Israel. And, and they were brutal. And, and Jonah, they, they were Jonah's enemies. And he thought God ought to destroy him. Aren't you glad that God is a God of mercy? Amen. God of compassion? By the way, folks, God's eyes is always upon you and I. We're his children. And God is looking at you and I tonight. He knows where we stand with him. He knows what we uh, 
did yesterday. He knows what we've done today. And he knows what we're going to do tomorrow. You say, you believe that, Rex? I believe it with all my heart. If that's not the case, he wouldn't be God. Wouldn't be God. In chapter number 4 and verse 6, And the Lord prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. God prepared a gourd or a shade for Jonah. Look in verse number seven. After God made the gourd to come up and had the gourd was like a tree, had big leaves on it, evidently. And then what happened? Verse seven. There was a worm involved. A worm that came and devoured the leaves of the tree, and the shade was gone. Well, where did the worm come from? What did verse 7 say? But God prepared a worm when the morning rose up the next day and it spoke to God that it withered. You preacher, what are you doing? I'm just showing you the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. Verse number 8. And it came to pass when the sun did arrive that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die and said it is better for me to die than to live. God controlled the wind and the sun again. Remember this. I'm showing you in, verse, in chapter number one or chapter my first point, the sovereignty of God. God calls his own people. You and I are his people, and we have been called. God has called you and I. And he, as he has called us, he assigned us our duties, our gift, our ministries. God does this. Not only that, he appoints our places and ministry according to his purpose. Do you believe that? To his purposes. If you're in the will of God and you're having a ministry, you're doing the ministry that he had purposed for you to do. I think there were a lot of people not here, but I've been in uh, churches where uh, people were trying to do something that God didn't call them to do. I think many, many young men have, have thought that God has called them to preach, but they never did preach. I don't think God called them. And I'm not being a judge, but God, God calls his people. God appoints us to his ministry and what he wants us to do according to his purpose. Right. Because of us, his sovereignty. His sovereignty. So we see the, the sovereignty of God. Then I want to note chapter number two. Here was, here was Jonah, a backslidden servant of God, rebellion against God, running from God, but we see in chapter number two the protection of God. God, let, let me read this to you. In chapter number two, Jonah was in the belly of the whale, or the fish. Jesus said it was a whale, by the way. Somebody said, well, where you get the word whale? Jesus called it a whale. If Jonah was three, night, three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so should the Son of Man be in, in, the, uh, in the earth uh, three days and three nights. So he was in the whale. Then Jonah, chapter number two, and Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish, fish belly. And so we, we see here that he prayed to God. He remembered God. And he repented of, of his sin. And, and God, how could you live in, in the belly of a, of a great fish, a whale, three days and three nights? Reckon how, reckon how you could do that. I say God. Amen. I say God. And so here we see the protection of God on a backslidden servant. Now I don't know about you. 
But I know how it is to be backslidden. I've been there. I've been there. And it's a miserable life. I think the most miserable person in the world is someone out of the will of God. I really believe that. And by the way, Jonah, and let, turn in your Bible. We got time. You got your Bible. Look in uh, chapter number one, verse three. But Jonah rose up to flee from Tarshish, from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarsh, Tarsh. So he paid the fare thereof and went down. You see that word went down? And then look in verse number five. Then the marine were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wave that, where that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was going down. There he was going down again. Look, look over in chapter number two in verse six. He said, I went down to the bottom of the mountains in the sea there. You know what happened to it? when you start backsliding? You just go down, 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 Amen. down. No way up until you get right with God. Is that what happened to John? But we see here the protection of God. The protection of God. He prepared a great fish to consume Jonah and keep him from drowning. How about that? And somebody said, how about that, sport fans? Yeah. God protected him. Here, here we see, now get this. Here we see a wonderful picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. We may go our own way. We may be disobedient. We may be rebellion and out of the will of God. And we, 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 in our life, we're prone to complain and, and gripe and grumble. You ever did that? I have. I have. You see, there's, there's mishap that comes in our life that we don't like. I mean, there, 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 there's things that happen that I don't understand. There's things that I, I don't understand, and I have to be honest with you, sometimes I complain. You ever been there? Yeah. Thank you for being honest. Amen. We complain and we whine. We cry. We sorrow. Uh, when trouble comes, we shed tears. We gripe about things that goes on in our life. But listen to this. It just may be a great fish that God has prepared for our good. He done every, all of this, stage by stage by stage, until Jonah was swallowed by the whale, and God got his attention. Yeah, think about that. Think about that. There are things that have happened in my life that I didn't understand. I look back on, on my life as, as a kid. I look at, back on my life as as a, 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 a young preacher, uh, I mean, I was a, a young preacher, and boy, I, I thought I knew it all. And I thought God would open the door for me to pastor the church the next day. I had things happen that, that, that I didn't understand, that I didn't like, and, uh, but I want to tell you, I look back now, it was the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. All these things. Oh my, what a God we have. Chapter number two, the protection of God. He was protecting Jonah, getting his attention. Step by step by step by step. And Jonah was in, in the bellies of the whale. And God was protecting him from the storm, from the water, until uh, I get it. I guess Jonah stayed in there until he made the, made the whale sick and he just vomited him up. No, God, it was God. Chapter number, chapter, uh, number three, we see the pardon and mercy of God. I want you to notice what it said in the first verse of chapter number three. In chapter number one, the word of God came to Jonah. Jonah rebelled and ran in a different direction. Chapter number three, boy, what a verse. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Aren't you glad for the second 
that God gives you and I. I say I'm glad that he gives more than second chances. He never forgets about you and I. He loves you and me so much. He got his eyes on us. Somebody might say, well, I don't feel like God can use me no more. They have a Greek word for that, hogwash. <laughs> God can. You know why? Because you're his own. And he'll give you a second change and a third change and a fourth change and a fifth change over and over and over. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. In this chapter, God sent a, not only did he give Jonah a second chance, but he, he sent a great revival to these heathens, heathen nations, the Syrians. They were wicked. They were, they were brutal. Let me tell you what, what happened. Well, you already know what happened. A great revival took place. God, God didn't destroy them. But, but the uh, the Syrians, when they captured an uh, enemy, they, they, they tortured them. They, they skin them. Now, this is history. And, and they, they burn them alive. And, and not only that, but they, they would bury them, bury them in the desert, desert sand, and up to the neck, and with thorns through their tongues. And they say many of them went insane before they died. Brutal. They were brutal. They, these these uh, armies of uh, of the Assyrians they were so 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 feared that when they went into a city and fixing to o overtake it, many of the people of the city committed suicide where they wouldn't be tortured. You say, well, preacher, what are you saying that for? I'm showing you the mercy of God. Mercy of God. Jonah said, judge them, Lord, and get rid of them. God said, I love them. I want to, I want to save them. Jesus came to sink and to save that which was lost. And I believe in the, the sovereignty and providence of God that everybody can be saved if they accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Sent a great revival. And ladies and gentlemen, when you and I obey his will and share his word, we can get great blessings from God. Being in the will of God will automatically bring you and I great blessings. You want to be blessed? Get right with God. Get right with God. Preacher, are you ever sad? Well, yeah, I'm sad. I get sad sometimes. But I still have peace in my heart. There's a difference between happy, happiness and peace. Are you happy? Are you in the will of God? When storms come in our lives, can we accept it? You see, we can prove how we, we can prove to a certain extent, how, how close we are to God, the way we, re, we react when problems come in our life. And I'll be honest, sometimes I don't really, uh, react like I want to. But you think about it and stop and think about it. God's in charge. God's in charge. God's in charge. I could tell you some things that, uh, that God did for me and, and the peace that he gave me on some, some decisions that I had to make. I won't go into that, but I want to tell you, thank God for his peace. Thank God for his mercy. And so here we see that God showed a pardon and mercy to Jonah, and he showed pardon and mercy to a whole city because they got right with him. Right with him. And then in chapter number four, we see the pity of God. Even though Jonah was angry, 
even though he wanted the whole city to be destroyed. And he said, I'm just going to sit back. And he made him a, a little booth, put some limbs around him and for a little booth, and the sun began to, uh, the wind began to blow, and he was so uncomfortable, and, 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 and he, he was full of grief. You know what God did? Verse number six. He showed pity upon him again. What a God. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah will be exceedingly glad of the gourd. The pity of the Lord. How he showed pity upon, on Jonah again. Even though he was angry and said, God, you ought to destroy them. You, you ought to know how wicked they are. Boy, I'm glad he showed mercy to me when I was a young boy. And I'm glad that he has shown mercy to me as I'm grown from a boy to a teenager, to, to a young man, to, to an old man. I'm glad that he showed me mercy and had pity upon me from day to day, week to week, and year to year. Yes, he would grieve. Verse number eight said that he was almost he almost fainted. And he was full of grief. In chapter number four. He was almost fainted, almost passed out. But grieved and fainted, but he was not forsaken. And neither will you or I ever be forsaken by the Lord. I'll never leave you or forsake you. What the Lord said in the book of Hebrews. So I leave this with you. You know this. You can say it by heart. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know, I underline some things in this verse. And we know that some things. Is that what your Bible says? No. no. And we know that all things. And by the way, he didn't say we'll understand it. He said we know. And we know that all things work together for good. For good. Not for bad. For good. To them that love God and are called according to what? Yes, His purpose. Amen. His purpose. There it is. The sovereignty of God. I'm glad. He's mine and I'm his. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. I hope you continue to have a good week. And Lord willing, we'll see you uh, Sunday. And uh, Brother Timothy, would you dismiss us in prayer? We stand and we'll be dismissed. Thank you for the time you give us to read the cross tonight. Hear your word preached. Thank <laughs> you.